Welcome to Human Potential at Work, the show where we explore social impact, inclusion, and empowerment of everyone, including persons with disabilities. Get ready to be inspired, hear success stories, and learn tips and principles for bringing out the best in everyone. Hello, everyone. This is Deborah Rue, and you're listening or watching, listening to or watching Human Potential at Work. Uh, today, I am uh, joining you from a hotel room in New York City, and um, I attended the Valuable 500 event. That was the kickoff of the Valuable 500 in the United States here in New York City with Dr. Caroline Casey, and we got to meet all these amazing agency owners and uh, the CEO of Omnicom and a lot of the Omnicom executives that really um, are dedicated to make sure that the work that they're producing is inclusive for everyone and um, they're, they're really working hard to include people with disabilities. So this morning, my guest, coincidentally, happens to be Jason Swank, and he's going to talk about what he does, but he actually has his own podcast, and I highly recommend listening to it. I'm very honored that to be one of his guests that will in an episode that's coming up in December. Um, but the thing is, Jason is also a creative, and he works with uh, creative agencies, but at the same time, Jason, like most of us human beings, has been touched by disability in his life as well. And uh, I would, uh, D Jason and I have talked about this before, but I think it makes him more creative so that we're going to talk about that today. So Jason, thank you for joining the program today. Yeah, thanks for having me on. So Jason, do you mind telling the audience a little bit more about who you are and what you do and maybe a little bit more about your podcast too? Yeah, sure. So uh, Jason Swank in, in 1999, when Al Gore invented the internet, um, I literally started making designing websites. But my first website I designed was actually making fun of NSYNC because one of my best friends looked like Justin Timberlake from um, NSYNC. And so we created a fake band, fake website called InShit, and it got popular. And, and so from there, people started asking me to design websites. So I kind of fell into the agency world by accident and then just kept growing it over time and hiring more and more people. So, you know, we did it for 12 years until selling the agency. And we work with clients from LegalZoom, Hitachi, AT&T, Aflac, so all the big brands. And it was a fun, exciting road. And then sold the agency and, and didn't know what I was going to do with my life after that because I was just sitting around. I was like, bored. I didn't have that significance. I was depressed. And I was just lucky enough that maybe a year or a year and a half later, some of my old competitors were like, hey, how'd you do this? How'd you do X? And so I literally was like, well, let's jump on a call. And then I just started recording it. And that actually turned into the podcast. And so we've been doing the, a podcast for agency owners for the past five years where yeah. we just wanted to create a resource we wish we had. And that's amazing. That's amazing. They, sometimes life comes for you. So a great example of how it comes for you. Mm -hmm. So I, I know also when we, we talked, we talked about uh, you and I share uh, something. We both have ADHD mm -hmm. and um, your son. What did you say? Also. I lost attention. <laughs> Good one. An ADHD joke. I love it. <laughs> But and and last night at the Valuable Five Hundred meeting in New York City, somebody said something I had not heard, and they said that um, I think it was I think it was Janet Riccio said that um, many people, many creatives have ADHD, and she said so. If you think you know hiring people with neurodiversity is you know bad for the agency, let me tell you this is not true. These are your creatives, and and you know you really want people to bring their best self to work. So what we should be doing instead of excluding anyone is we should be thinking of ways to be innovative and make sure people have what they need to be creative and as productive as possible. So I, I was wondering if you wanted to comment on that. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, that's that's what's enabled me to do everything I've ever done. I mean, you know, I think a, a lot of times people, too, need to, like, they try to work on their weaknesses, right? And I think it's a, the wrong thing to do. Like, for many years, you know, I was always bad at, I'm still bad at reading, um, I'm bad at writing, grammar, all that. And I always try to work on that. And that was just because of, you know, that, where if I just focused more on being creative and then figured out 
all right, let me hire people to, to proofread my stuff and to fix that kind of, I don't have to worry about it. Then we can kind of excel at the things we do exceptional. Um, and we can kind of see the world a little bit differently than, you know, other people, you know, I remember in school, I even struggled and, you know, I didn't want to follow directions. I want, like, I always looked for a way to do things a little bit different, but school kind of keeps taking you down one way. That's why I hated school. I never had a good experience. I, I just couldn't wait to get out. The only thing I actually learned in school was how to outsource. I would pay people to do my work. <laughs> a future entrepreneur. So mm. that's great. So, you know, I, I know that your son also has AD, ADHD. Mm. And as you learned about who you were as an individual and all the, all the pieces that make up you as an individual and really started learning about ADHD, how, can, how were you able to apply that to support your son? Well, so that just, maybe, and maybe he has a better experience in school because he has a father that understands. Yeah, well, I mean, he can look at, you know, me as business successful, right? And then he goes, okay, I can, I can figure this out. Because he was going to kind of the traditional schools. Now he goes to an, a special school for ADHD called Howard in Atlanta. It's, it's really good, very costly, <laughs> but it's worth it, right? And so he's the type of person that just can't sit down. Um, he always wants to talk. He always wants to socialize and stand up. And, you know, I, I just tell him, I'm like, look, you know, you're a little bit different and you're going to stand out, which is a good thing, right? You could be like me. Like I was kind of like that in school. And now I get paid to speak. I get paid to stand up. I get paid to talk. I get paid to think differently than everybody else, rather than follow the stupid rules of being a manufacturer worker, right? Of mm -hmm. Kind of like, that's why school was kind of invented is like to pe teach people how to do assembly line crap. And so, you know, it's, it's, I think it's good for him to be like, okay, I, I got options. Like I know he has to own his own business one day. Like he won't be able to work for anybody just like me. <laughs> and that's very common with ADHD too. Um, I believe our producer, Doug Foresta, I think it, it, um, it, it has impacted his family too. And, you know, I think of it, I, I got diagnosed very late in life. And, um, and it was funny when you're describing your son, because I thought, oh, that's me. I, I have the hardest time just sitting. It's like, I'm always standing on planes or standing on trains, or I'm always finding some reason to stand up because I just am too, I'm just too itchy to, uh, to sit. And I can't drink coffee, unfortunately, and I love coffee, but it just, it, it, it just, causes me to be even more of ants in my pants and I got to be moving and shifting around. But when you focus it, you know, it, you know, when you focus this, you can do amazing things as we both know. And mm -hmm. I think it's cool that he's going to a school for people, you know, to support people with ADHD. I do think it's unfortunate that he has to go to an expensive separate school because I, I wonder what our schools would look like if we could, you know, really tap into what makes people unique. And, and I understand how it works now, but I just think that I know that my son, you know, also has some of the same characteristics as me. And um, I know he would have benefited from that, but I think we all would benefit from it because yeah. once again, it's focusing on what your strengths are instead of trying to fix your weaknesses. And uh, I was going to be a journalist major in a college and I didn't finish college, but I went to college and I had a professor tell me that I was one of the worst writers he, he'd ever had in his class. And so I really should pick another career. And it just made me mad. So what an I, ass. Like what an ass. ass. He was such an ass. Uh, I know, really. So you've been given this. Yeah, but you, you know about, about people that do that that motivates the crap out of me. And I think it motivates everybody else. Like we were, I was watching, or my wife was watching a documentary and she was telling me about it, about the best athletes in the world, Michael Jordan, Wayne Gretzky, you know, Kobe Bryant, all these people like Michael Jordan was cut from his high school basketball team. And it just pissed them off. I remember even getting cut from my freshman year tennis team in high school. And it pissed me off. I became, I never lost a match in high school, got a tennis scholarship and all that kind of stuff. So it just, it's like those little things piss you off to be like, just like Gary Vanderchuk. That's what I like. Like he sucked at school. I mean, he's all over the damn place. 
And he's just like, piss on you, all of you that like doubted me. <laughs> right, right. Oh, really? I'm going to show you. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I did to it. It made me so mad that uh, obviously I've never forgotten it, but I would like to, you know, see where he is in his, anyway. It, yeah, and that, I don't know if that's part of ADHD, but it just always makes me mad too when somebody says no to me or says something stupid to me. And, and now I'm old enough that I'm like, Mm, yeah okay I'll consider the source but I would like to explore a little bit this more this topic of creatives and ADHD Mm -hmm. and and really not only ADHD but the neurodiversity of our beautiful brains and deciding that pockets of people um, are broken so you're broken because we're going to educate you only in this one way and I hope you fit into it. And if you don't, obviously something's wrong with you. Couldn't be something wrong with the system or the way we're educating or, you know, encouraging people to own their best self. So I was. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, obviously the system's perfect because all these politicians are always making decisions for what's best for the people. Um, so I don't know what's going on. No, I think they're all a bunch of idiots. Um, I really do. And, and, you know, it's just, it's pretty sad that they try to treat everybody the same. Um, and, and they don't really kind of, and I, I remember my mom, you know, fighting for me in school, like meeting with teachers and the principal, because they used to try to like back in the day, they used to try to put you on the short bus. Right. right? Um, right. And, you know, they were like, no, like, he's fine. Like, you know, stop trying to put him in like, he's in eighth grade, you're trying to put him in second grade classes. Like, you know, why, why can't you adapt to them? They're like, well, we can't adapt to everybody. I'm right. like, well, then how are you going to, you know, survive? And, and so I remember the, I remember my mom uh, going through that and that was pretty tough. And, and they even did that to my son before we put him in, uh, you know, Howard. I remember like this one crappy teacher just being like, you know, he's always disrupting the class. Well, yeah, like, you know, that's what he's doing. I mean, he's not mean. He's just bored to death. And you're boring as shit. So <laughs> you're like, boring him. Please you know, don't he's probably me. smarter than you. So <laughs> that's, that's how I always looked at school of going like the teachers are teaching me stuff. I'm like, how am I, how am I going to apply this? And I always used to laugh because um, especially as technology gets better and better. My teachers used to say, you need to pay attention more in math because you're not going to be able to survive. It's not like you're going to be carrying a calculator in your pocket. Yeah, you you were yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> you're so funny, Jason. Oh, uh, well, it, how, how has ADHD allowed you to be more creative? You were a um, you know agency owner, and now you work with agency owners, you know, all over the world, helping them be more successful. And and, and one thing that I want to point out to the audience is remember. This is how we change the world with this creative, with our commercials, with our movies, with our everything that we're doing. Society pays attention to advertising. And is there, you know, stuff that's crap? And yes, and it's used negatively against us with the fake news and all that stuff. But at the same time, this is how we learn in society. So, you know, how, how have you, how has this been a gift? Well, I mean, I, I'm just able to see it differently. I don't know how, like... I've never seen the other side. Right. <laughs> I've That's always, who you are. <laughs> right. So like, um, I just look at things and going, all right, well, everybody's doing it this way. What if I did it the complete opposite? And, um, that's how my brain works. And, and the, what I, what I guess I'm fortunate about, and I think I've read a, a couple places where other people are fortunate about is whenever I find something that I'm really extremely passionate in, I can block out everything else and just ex- do extreme focus until it's done. Like I'll implement faster than anybody. Um, you know, I'll have an idea and like, I'll talk to my team and then it's already done before the team's even like, yeah, that's a good idea. And it's just done. Cause I'll just, whether it take 24 hours of straight working, like, hmm, like I can't do anything else. It's just so focused on that. But then when things don't interest me, I'm like, what? I'm, I'm like all over the place. <laughs> Gosh, it remind, I, I remember um, Dr. Christopher Lee was the one that uh, suggested that I had ADHD. And I said, oh, no, no, no. I, um, apparently, I didn't know anything about ADHD. So um, I, 
I said, no, 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 I'm way too hyper-focused. And he said, yeah, Deborah, that's what that little H is there in the ADHD. But what I find if this is very similar to you, I can move mountains when I'm focused. And what I hadn't thought about it the way you said it when I'm bored, you know, but um, the thing that I do, the negative that I find with it, and, and I don't know if it's, if I can tie these two together, but I think I can, but is that I, when I get so hyper-focused and I love the work that I'm doing, I believe that inclusion um, of everyone, especially people with disabilities is just so critical to society. And so I'm so passionate about my work, but I find that I have a hard time relaxing and calming down and resting and, and sleeping enough. And, uh, and I've gotten better at it as I've gotten older, but I find that when I don't, and I get too wound up and too excited, um, the depression comes for me and the depression, um, you know, likes to hold me under the water mm -hmm. and I do my best with it, but you know, it's worse in the winter for me, but I, I was just wondering, you know, if you've had any of those experiences, it's coming down from the highs. No, no, I, I've, I've been lucky uh, about that. I, you know, yeah, I mean, sure, I get depressed sometimes, but not very, not for not very long. Um, and then I can kind of switch it real quick. I remember I, I've been listening to Tony Robbins forever. Um, I remember buying the, the DVDs uh, in the 90s. And uh, I remember he said, like, whenever you start to feel angry or depressed, um, you know, think of something you're grateful for. And it's able to kind of switch it. Now, you know, my wife gets, uh, you know, depressed and, and I guess she's married to me. <laughs> no, I'll just get, <laughs> like, but she'll take medicine for it. And so I know there's different types of, you know, imbalances and that kind of stuff that you just can't, can't do anything with. But, you know, I, I don't even like the word, you know, disability because, you know, it allows us to, to be better at other things and maybe not just one. So I don't know. Well, and I agree with you. I think it, in some ways it, sometimes it feels silly to me that we have to, you know, put out all these labels because I think I'm just a normal human being that, you know, my brain works differently than, you know, somebody else's brain. I remember my son um, in the third grade, you had mentioned math. Um, he, 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 my husband's so smart and he blessed my son with that. And in the third grade, he was struggling with uh, long division. And um, <laughs> I, <yeah>. hate <laughs> I hate long division too. And his, his teacher called me up one night and told me that she thought he had ADHD and that I need to take him to the doctor to get him on medicine. And I was like, but I, I, none of his other teachers have ever told me he's disruptive. And a lot of his friends couldn't, they were like me, they couldn't sit, you know, still for a moment. But, um, and I said, and he does well in all of his other subjects, including he's doing well in math, except long division. And so why would you suggest that he needs to be on medication? I was like, I was really angry about it. And I, um, I went the next morning to the principal's office and, um, this is one of the few times I did, I was just really mad though as a mom. And so, because I had talked to my son about it and my son said, well, mom, I just find it very distracting to click, 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 click. And I said, what are you talking about? And he said, well, what the teacher's doing since I'm the student that is not doing well in this long division, um, we have to do the problems, the six or 10 problems within an amount of time. And she puts a little metronome on my desk click, 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 click. And I was like, so mad about that. And I said to the principal, shall I go in and get that off of his desk? Because I'm happy to do that right this sec. Mrs. Rue, Mrs. Rue, we'll take it. So he actually went to her and, and, the, and it was on my son's desk and it click, click, click. And he took it off. But my son was able to do these problems, but he could only complete three of them in the allotted time as opposed to six. So yeah, I, yeah I, that makes me so angry you know it's just in and the school the school my son goes to is the only school that they don't require to get medicated oh, and I'm like you yeah. really want to medicate them like why don't you medicate the teachers so they can actually have <laughs> more tolerance like I think that would be a better situation be like just give them some pot or whatever and be like chill out <laughs> that's right 
just chill. I know it, it's we have a lot of work to do, and the teachers are trying so hard in impossible situations too. But I I, I look I, I I'm hopeful that as now that the agency owners are getting involved in these conversations, that we're going to start looking at ourselves and what makes us rich and multi-dimensional human beings, that we can really start applauding this. You know, we can look for this and say, wow, do you know how many business owners are dyslexic? And well, so maybe this is not a negative. Maybe it's okay to be on the spectrum. Whenever we're finding all kinds of really interesting things about people that are on the autism spectrum mm -hmm. and people that have ADHD and dyslexia and other neurodiversity. And maybe people are broken, but our brains are made differently because there are a billion things that you can do in the world and we should all get to do them together. And it, it, I, I'm hoping for those times. I think those times are uh, happening right now. And it was very exciting to be talking to these, um, these very innovative and creative agency um, executives and owners last night and hearing how excited they were about the conversation. And I was talking to one woman and she was talking about just the, the mental health problems that they're seeing right now. In, in the workforce and how people are, they're scared, they're fearful, they're, you know, once again, we have our media, you know, or the fake news, all this stuff constantly telling us we're all in trouble, we're, this is going to happen, but, you know, there's a lot of fear. Um, it feels like there's a lot more fear happening in media than ever before. And how, how is that affecting the agency owners that you work with and what recommendations do you have for those creatives or do those topics even come up i just tell them not to watch the news like it's so, it's so it's so depressing when i do you know especially with you know what just happened uh, you know i i try to turn off the news as much as possible and then you know you'll get text messages and like i have a lot of agency and friends out in colorado you know and then you have the school shooting <laughs> and i'm just like right. you know, know but like it's so horrible yeah, so it's just, I just tell them, like, look, depending on, it doesn't matter who's in charge. Of I agree. Um, you know, like, I know I started my agency in 99. We grew in 2001 when the dot bomb happened. Uh, we grew in 2008 when the recession happened. So you just have to be resourceful and use the opportunities if people are fearful to benefit not take advantage of people but most people will kind of crawl up into a ball uh, I'm like okay this is the opportunity like I can't wait for the market to crash again because it will get rid of a lot of fake entrepreneurs and it will just start changing things and um, you know I, I kind of want it and warn it sure it, you know it's just you have to kind of change your business and be ready to change on a dime or change your lifestyle and that kind of stuff to, you know, weather through it. So, but I always learn the most from those storms. So um, I think if we allow ourselves to, those are the, uh, during the time of contrast, that's when we grow the most, but mm -hmm. well, I, be, before we go, I would really um, like you to tell the audience how they can find out more about your work. How can they find out about your podcast, which I highly recommend very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. And you know, how, how can we follow you on social media too? Yeah, the best place to go is just jasonswank.com and Swank is spelled S-W-E-N-K. So just jasonswank.com. And then if you want links to both the podcast, you can go to swankit, swank.it. And uh, it links to both shows, uh, the Smart Agency Masterclass, which is a, a weekly show uh, where I interview agency owners and amazing people. And then the Swank Today show is just kind of my, weekly kind of sum up of what I think agency owners need to really know about, um, you know, in business and uh, yeah. And it's, I, I perceive it's not just for agency owners. It's for people that are interested in creative creativity and, and doing better with your business. If you're an entrepreneur and um, I, I've learned, I learn a lot from these programs. So I just, in my opinion, yeah. I don't, I think it's for um, human beings. So um, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it can work for anybody, but a lot of times I just, I get really super specific. Uh, and then you can kind of, that that's how I do it, where I really look at, I don't have any competition. I just, because I drilled down far enough, I, 
my only competition is cat videos and procrastination. So, <laughs> well said, well said. I think it's very, very exciting that the the creatives have come into the conversation of inclusion. And last night I was thrilled that we gave out my we uh, gave a copy of everybody that attended a copy of my inclusion branding book because. You know, I think it's time to really recognize that diversity in human beings is a good thing. So I'm so thrilled that, you know, the marketing, the media, the creatives are now heavily engaged in these conversations. And I think if anybody can change this, these are the people that can do that. So, Jason, thank you for being on the show today. And thanks for the work that you're doing. And um, I'm really glad that your brain works the way it does. I think it benefits society. So thank you so much. I'm just glad it works. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. That's right. It's a blessing. So, well, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining the show today.